guys, it's Jan, and this is another quickie video from Initiate ID. And for some reason, it's not a concept video. Anyway, this is regarding a question that I got on YouTube, and it's regarding a lot of questions that I actually get in real life. Um, I did post a tutorial quite a while back, I think it was like a year ago, or maybe earlier this year, of me doing a scrolling text tutorial where I had a J panel and then there was text just bouncing back and forth, back and forth, taking half the size of the Y coordinate or the height of the J panel and just bouncing back and forth. It's one end and bouncing, yeah, I think you get the idea, it's bouncing back and forth. So I did that using the paint method and that's the preferred way to do it with animation. However, I also got a question, that how do you want to do that with a J-Label? So people ask me a lot, like, I want to do a lot with J-Label and J-Button and everything because it's easier doing it with J-Components rather than painting because painting requires coordinates and everything. Well, this method also needs coordinates too, but we'll figure out that in a moment. Now, why does people, why do I advocate the use of paint rather than using components for animation? Isn't it easier to use a turn your J label into an image by using an image icon? Maybe it is. But I regard paint as being more of the animation type method because you're not going to use. I don't get why my light is flickering. So if you notice the lights are flickering, just ignore that. So why are people saying, why can't I just use components? And animate that, move the coordinates. Well, there's a couple things. One, you're gonna get less feedback by doing component bouncing back and forth. If you have a lot of components, they're gonna start flashing because it kinda has to figure out where each component goes. So that might be an issue. Depending on what type of layout you have, that might be what happens. Another one is there is not necessarily a preferred coordinate based system for your component. So how do we implement this? Well, I like I said, I don't recommend you do this. I recommend use the paint method, but there are some areas where you, you just can't do that. And actually there's a way around that. You use another, you put a J panel where you're gonna animate the thing and add that to your other J panel. And actually the question that I got was, how do I put a J label bouncing back and forth on a J frame? That's another thing I wanted to mention before I get onto how do I do the J label on a J panel. You don't put components on a J frame. The only component you really put there is a J panel. There are exceptions to this. You could just put on the J frame. I recommend you put on the J panel. That is just good style and good convention. Why? Because you have more flexibility with a J panel. And there's a lot of cool things you could use. We do have a JX panel. Or I don't know what's called now. And we also have a. Uh, the Java JFX panel, which I always put JavaFX in there. So those go on the J frame and then all that stuff. So how do you put a J label to a J frame? You put the J label into a J panel and you put the J panel into the J frame. And that's that. So yeah, I guess the next part is how do we do that little bouncing scrolly thing with a J label on a J frame? Okay, first of all, I want to apologize that I'm not going to be talking directly into my microphone because I'm using my HD monitor so I can get some HD quality here. But basically what you see here is something I whipped up really quickly. I wasn't prepared for this. I didn't test it. Well, I did test it a little bit. And it does work. But there, there's a couple just things that are wrong with it. First of all, you don't. You want to put. make sure that when you work with swing, which is J, anything with J in front of it, any J frame, J panel, or anything with that, you want to put into the swing thread, the event and the event thread. I didn't do that here, I just put everything in main. Just don't do that. Other things I used shorthand, you know, acronyms for JF, JP. You should just use good names, not acronyms or abbreviations. And that's that. So let's talk about what we have here. Instead of painting, we have everything here. So because we're not used to painting, we only need like one method and just put everything in one call. I'm expecting you, you're you just doing proper convention, you're going to put this in a meaningful place. This is pretty much the loop which is going to continue inflicting pain across your J-frame by removing the J-label and just moving it back and forth. So what do we have here? We have our initializing the J-frame, the J-panel. The J-panel is going to go in the J-frame. I did that in this line. You can just do it a lot earlier. 
and we have to set the visibility after we have everything. So I just put all the add statements all together. Okay, so we're gonna set J frame and J panel to 800 by 600. You could just do set preferred size for J panel, not the J frame, but you want to set a nice, good number for J frame. So I have a J label here. I'm creating a J label called lab. Just call it label or something a little bit more meaningful. And I put hello world because I don't have any other meaningful words. So instead of you know our basic, you when you add components to a J frame or J panel. You're going to just usually use the layout that they have um, provided, which is the free layout. However, to do special things, you can either create a layout that uses this type of format or just do it as we're setting the layout to null. What's that mean? We're setting it to nothing. And how are we going to set everything? Well, we have insets and size. What insets are allow us to do is actually, I don't need insets, not anymore. I was under doing insets, we don't need them anymore. Dimensions we need to size, we need to get the labels preferred size, so we can just how we know how big the label is going to be. In X is, this is actually a meaningful variable, this is the X coordinate for the J label. And reverse is when we want to flip it back and forth. I know I just did it like nested while loops, I shouldn't have done that when I did the last tutorial. So we have set bounds, and this is actually the method that's going to coordinate where the label is going to be. So we have the x coordinate, which is going to be zero, and like I did on the scrolling text animation, I made it half the size of the height. Well, we have the J panel's height here, and dividing it by two. And then the last two arguments that are required is the width and the height of the actual component. And then I did all the add statements together. We put the label into the J panel, and then we put the J panel into the content pane of the J frame, and then we set the J frame to visible. Now let's go to the while loop that we have here, and this is pretty much the logic that's going to keep them to bounce back and forth. Like I said, you're probably going to put it in a meaningful place, and you might not necessarily use it in a while loop. You might use another loop, loop that, or a method that keeps getting called constantly to do your logic for the bouncing back and forth. So the first thing I do have here, reverse is or pretty much reverse tracks if it's going this way or this way. If it's if reverse is false, it goes this way, and if reverse Oh wait, I don't have mouse effects. Yeah, it goes right if we have reverse off, and it goes left if we have reverse on. And so we have reverse true and reverse false. Pretty much, this statement says if it is equal to the width, go in the other way. So if like the width here is 800, if the x ends up being 800, we're gonna go. We're gonna start going the other way. If reverse and otherwise, if x becomes zero eventually, it's gonna go right. So if reverse, if we're reversing, we're gonna go right left, and if it we're not which else which is not reversing, we're gonna start going right. Set bounce here again, and we have thread that sleeps, so everything's smooth, and you just don't see it bouncing uncontrollably. So let's test the whole product here, and we'll see what we get. And look what we have here: we have it bouncing. Now I said painting was a little bit clear. If you notice here, we're starting to see a bit of flicker. And that's because it keeps at, when you do the set bounds, it's pretty much repainting itself, and you get this weird feedback to it. And it's it's not smooth, it's not anything that, you know, painting was a little bit neater. Because painting is animation, and just it just keeps doing, doing new frames. Now, if you, another advantage with painting is that you can do double buffering. You can't double buffer with components. Sorry to say. So... That's pretty much all I have for you guys here, and uh, I can do the size this change, and just make sure you don't resize it while it's bouncing back, or else it does not track the height properly, and it bounces on the wrong location. So that's my little tutorial on how to do it with components. I do not recommend this. I showed you how to do it. Don't do it. Okay? So I'm Jen, and this is your scrolling component glass thing. Thanks for watching.